really thrilled to be here in Rhode Island and work with uh, diverse customers here in the Central Falls, Pawtucket region. This is a great opportunity to introduce ourselves and provide some other services that maybe have helped small businesses in the region. So, pleased to be here. We are a multi-service nonprofit agency in Central Falls, and I'm just looking to learn how to grow our nonprofit and how to be more effective in reaching the population that we serve. We are an organization that's based in Boston providing free legal services to minority, immigrant, and women-owned businesses. Everything that we do at the Lawyers Committee is for free. We believe that small businesses are the engines of economic growth in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And we are at this business forum an accelerator today to talk to people about the free legal services that we provide and to encourage these inspiring entrepreneurs who have big dreams and limited resources to push forward and to do so with the resources that we're going to discuss here today. El presidente de la Cámara Hispana de Comercio del Estado de Rhode Island, una organización recientemente creada para trabajar con los comerciantes latinos y ayudarlos a promover, a progresar y fomentar el desarrollo económico de los mismos. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you this morning. Today's program is uh, the Small Business Accelerator Forum. Uh, the, the idea came about um, from work that uh, Cubs Helpline has done in Massachusetts, uh, ways of helping local small businesses grow, uh, doing this in collaboration with, uh, with uh, other organizations that are trying to do the same. Uh, we've been able to uh, really revamp a lot of our connection to the business community. Uh, because of great partnerships such as Navigate Credit Union, uh, where they hold uh, business round discussions uh, with the local business community. And because of that, we've been able to get closer to the business community, both on Dexter, Broad Street, but all over the city. And I think the perspective that we have received from that is that uh, Central Falls government, the Central Falls government needed to step up to the plate to be more supportive. And that's why we made great investments in our planning department. This small business accelerator group uh, is great. It's a great opportunity for uh, the mayors not only to come out and tell you about what's going on, but to really connect and network with all those important organizations, whether they're the businesses or the nonprofits of the world. So I want to thank you for allowing me to be here this morning. Uh, it's about uh, what happened in my radio show a few, a few uh, weeks ago. I was talking about the Affordable Care Act. And, um, you know, I was talking about the fact that Congress may completely abolish the, 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 the act. And a, a person called and, and he said, well, so does that mean that the, that, the, that the fine that they charged me this year, the $500 charge, am I going to get it back? So I, you know, I asked the person, you paid a fine? Why did you pay a fine? Well, because I didn't get any health insurance. And so I was like, okay, why didn't you get health insurance? And he said, well, because it's too expensive. And I'm like, okay, so how much was it? He said, well, I don't know, it's very expensive. And I'm like, well, did you go to the Health Source Rhode Island website and look and see what the price of the health insurance was? And what does he say? No. I, I, it's too expensive. This individual, based on his income and the number of people supported by his salary, qualified for expanded Medicaid. He didn't have to pay anything. He didn't have to pay the fine, but worst of all, he qualified for free health insurance. Information is power. And I think that if we had more access to information for our community, we would go further. Well, I'll tell you the story of Pablo Rodriguez, the entrepreneur, that opened the practice, you know, 30 years ago. And uh, I put a shingle. I had eight chairs in my office uh, and two employees. And uh, I was just sitting there waiting for people to come into my office. Uh, and, you know, uh, slowly but surely, people started coming in. The practice started growing. Um, and it was, I think, year three, uh, I already had hired, you know, four more people, the practice was growing, and I didn't even know how much I was making. Uh, I would just go to my accountant at the end of the year to do my taxes, and I sit with my accountant, 
And he says, I have good news and bad news. And I'm like, oh boy, uh, what's the good news? And he says, you made a lot of money last year. You really are growing. You're doing great. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, so what's the bad news? The bad news is that the minute you grew from two employees to over five, you were supposed to be paying your taxes on a weekly basis. You were supposed to be paying your social security, all your fika fika suda, all those wonderful things that you're supposed to be paying. Like, well, I can pay it now. He said, no, uh, you can pay it now, but there's a fine for it. And I'm like, okay, I can pay the fine. And he goes, it's 42,000. <laughs> This is the story of entrepreneurship. This is the story of people trying to make it in business. And if all the people here, if all the people that are working towards improving business in Rodney can help little Pablo Rodriguez's that are opening the practices so they don't make the same mistake, I could have done so much more with $42,000. <laughs> the last six years since I started at Nalligan, one of my tasks was really to build relationships with the small business community. With what goal? To do three specific things. First, to bring resources to the small business community. They need to have some type of organizations that bring them um, hope. What do we have to offer for you? With that hope, we're going to educate them. We're going to let them know about these resources that are around the state that is going to help them. And the third goal is we're going to provide the working opportunities. It's nothing better than having a network where you can relate to someone, where you can talk about what's happening, where you can talk about your needs and then find solutions collectively, right? So we started this Small Business Owners six years ago and it has been really successful. We have an average of 50 small businesses that come to these meetings and we have five meetings every year. And it's open to everybody, regardless of if you are a member or not, not even for the union, everybody could come to these businesses. I want to talk about an option that we have for small business in um, the credit union. We have a microloan and we establish this microloan based on the needs of the small business owners when we hold the small business meetings. Um, usually, the credit union or banks have microloans that are $25,000 up. And for our small businesses, that wasn't really what they needed. They needed something up to $10,000 with different guidance and flexibility standards that most of the time that they came to, to apply for $25,000, they wouldn't qualify based on the flexibility standards that we have. So we created this guidance with the commercial lending department and um, our leadership was very committed to have an option for our targeted market, which is the emerging markets. What we do is that if we don't have the right service for you, we never say no. What we do is we get you to say that yes, so we get you to those partners and resources that we have until we are able to lend money to you. Um, but the most important thing is that you, when you become a member, you become part of our family, and we are here to really help you navigate the system. And what we want is really for the small businesses to be successful, because we do know that small businesses are the ones that make the difference in Rhode Island. They're the ones that grow the economy, and we want to be part of that success with you. And at the Lawyers Committee, we are a free legal organization. So we provide all our services for free to our clients. And uh, we do all of our work with really amazing, talented lawyers, the type of lawyers that you would go to and pay $200 an hour. Those lawyers volunteer with us, they have close relationships with us, and they will take your work for free. Central part of the work that we do is our economic justice work. Economic justice is just our fancy way of saying small businesses. El proyecto de justicia económica lo que hace principalmente es ayudarle a los pequeños empresarios, a las, a las pequeñas empresas, los pequeños negocios, para que puedan adelantar y crecer obteniendo servicios gratuitos. So we provide the Economic Justice Project's legal services for free to minority-owned, immigrant-owned, and women-owned businesses. Uh, we've concentrated most of our work in Massachusetts, but we would love to 
have clients in Rhode Island and help businesses in Rhode Island to also grow and succeed. So we do this work through a variety of different programs. One of the, one of the, this is an example of what we do. So we have a number of seminars and workshops that we give throughout the year. We run dozens of them. And in these seminars, this particular one, I think, is about eight weeks. And each week covers a different topic. We also run workshops at the request of the community. So let's say that a bunch of entrepreneurs here in Central Falls, right? Mark Calio, our buddy from Central Falls over there, you know, calls us in to do a workshop on lease review or contract review. We would be happy to do that in Pawtucket, Central Falls, or to connect you with the workshops that we're doing in Boston. So aside from the cohorts and the workshops that we do, we also provide one-on-one -on -one support. So you're too busy to go to a workshop, you don't need a workshop, you just want a lawyer to review your lease because you're renting a space in this building. We can do that. You come to us and you tell us exactly what you need. You know, I need my lease review. I have a contract that I'm going to sign and I don't know if the contract is written well. You know, I'm hiring an employee and I want to make sure that I'm classifying the employee the right way. Or I want to navigate to get a loan and they're telling me that I need to have an agreement or a contract in place. You come to us, we get you all tied up in a bow and you can go back to navigate to get your financing. So we can work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to meet the need of your business. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, healthcare and attempt to demystify some of the you know, issues or concerns you might have around offering um, health insurance. A little bit about Tufts Health Plan. We've actually been here in Rhode Island, I should say back here in Rhode Island since 2009, offering insurance to um, businesses. And uh, in the very near future, we're also going to be offering, um, again, as one mentioned, um, insurance coverage to individuals who are eligible um, for, for Medicaid. So we're expanding our, our footprint here. We have a pretty wide reach in Rhode Island and uh, we're certainly interested in, um, in talking to you. Just a couple of the myths around health insurance and uh, the Affordable Care Act. It is, it can be uh, complicated. There are a lot of pieces to it. And as, uh, um, you know, as we know, uh, the Affordable Care Act is also referred to, uh, referred to as Obamacare. And we also know, or most of you know, that the, the current president has plans to uh, attempt to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the most recent attempt was not successful, um, and there's talk about um, restarting those uh, discussions and coming to Congress with another plan, but for the time being, the Affordable Care Act as we know it um, is in place, um, and as Dr. Rodriguez had mentioned, there is an individual mandate that does require that each person does have some type of insurance coverage or, uh, or there are penalties. Many business owners may think, you know what, I'm healthy, my employees are young, we don't need insurance, uh, you know, do we really have to offer it? Um, you don't have to offer it, but there are so many reasons why you should. Uh, as an employee, you want to attract and retain the best talent. You want to keep people happy, engaged, and productive in their roles. It's very expensive to hire, train, and um, bring new employees up to speed and uh, one way to uh, retain talented individuals is to offer them a benefits package that includes a comprehensive um, health insurance plan. And another way that the insurance can actually help is that those that have insurance are more likely to seek uh, care for preventative services um, and also uh, be treated for you know, potentially any ongoing conditions that they might be managing. And you want people to stay engaged, you want them to be healthy, you want to uh, increase productivity, you want to reduce absenteeism. All good reasons uh, why you should offer insurance coverage. Myth number three, insurance is too complicated and confusing for employees. Um, and again, there are a lot of options to choose from when it comes to health insurance. There are different plan designs, there are different networks, there are tiered plans, um, there are deductibles co-pays, co-insurance, it's different coverage levels. All these things go into offering a plan that's going to make sense. Um, we have people available 
uh, we want to talk to you about the options that are available to you. We want to help you get informed and make an informed decision about your coverage. And uh, one of our sales uh, executives, Lori Wall, is actually here today. Um, again, if you have two, at least two eligible employees, um, then you qualify for group insurance coverage in Rhode These are some of the things that drive insurance costs. Uh, which is an overview. The first one is uh, the network. And what network means is how many doctors are in your network, right? The more you have, the more expensive uh, your, op your health insurance options will be. The more you get into sort of limited control care within a system, uh, such as the lifespan product that Jim mentioned, uh, the uh, less expensive that product may be. And then also how managed is your care. Um, Como se maneja el cuidado de la, de la salud. Si tiene un doctor de cabecera, va a ser más favorable. Si tiene un, un producto que da más flexibilidad para ir a donde, donde quiera, cualquier doctor, va a costar más. Y, uh, and then finally, the, uh, how much out of pocket. So your co-pays, your deductibles. Uh, el último, la última opción es que tanto se paga de su, de su bolsillo. Mientras más pague el bolsillo, pues va a ser más favorable la póliza de seguro. Mientras menos pague, va a ser más, eh, más costoso. Uh, as you're navigating the complexity that is healthcare, uh, you know, one of the things we want to get out of this is that you think of Tufts Health Plan, right? Whether it's, you know, from, from Jim's perspective, uh, in terms of uh, small business insurance, whether it's from Helene Fortes perspective, now that we've entered Medicaid, so on the, on the exchange uh, on uh, Rhode Island Health Source, as you think of options, certainly you'll be seeing Tufts Health Plan as one of those options. And we're here for the greater good of the community. We're here to collaborate with the great organizations who are here today. small businesses is clearly a need in the community to get education, resources, and the working opportunities, and it was covered today here at this venue. It was awesome to hear for different experts from different fields that actually help the um, small business needs in um, the community, and especially the emerging markets community. Me interesó de este eh, evento mucha información que yo conocía acerca del seguro de salud. Eh, que de verdad no conocemos mucho de él y también eh, una información muy interesante de, de la señorita Sandra Khan acerca de la navegante Credit Union. Eh, creo que voy a asistir al próximo eh, meeting que tienen ellos.